Welcome back to History of Simple Things. Today's topic comes from one of our viewers, Apocalyptic Adventure, 1823. Thanks for the suggestion. You asked, what's the actual difference between regular key ignition and push button start? If you've ever driven both an older car and a newer one, you've probably noticed how starting them feels completely different. One has you turning a metal key with a satisfying click, while the other just needs a tap of a button, sometimes without even pulling your keys out of your pocket. But what's really going on behind the scenes? How do these two systems work, and why did we move away from the old-school turn-and-start ritual? Stick around as we dive into the evolution of ignition systems right here on History of Simple Things. In the traditional setup, the ignition key is a physical object that not only opens your doors, but also activates the engine. Behind the scenes, that familiar metal key is more than just a piece of shaped metal. It's connected to a cylinder that houses a mechanical switch. When you insert the key and rotate it, you're physically rotating that switch through a few positions, typically off, accessory, on, and finally start. At the start position, an electrical connection is made, sending power from the battery to the starter motor. The starter then cranks the engine, and once it's running, you release the key and it springs back to the on position. All of this is pretty tactile, and in a way, reassuring. You're in complete control and you feel each stage of the process. The physical key also serves as a theft deterrent, albeit a basic one. It has to match the tumblers in the ignition lock cylinder, and more modern versions include a transponder chip that communicates with the car's onboard computer. Without that chip sending the right signal, the engine won't start. But at the end of the day, the entire system depends on mechanical interaction, moving parts that wear down over time, especially the ignition switch itself, which is a common failure point in older vehicles. Now let's talk about push-button ignition. This system was first introduced in high-end luxury cars, but today it's everywhere, from compact city cars to pickup trucks. At its core, the push-button system replaces that mechanical turning action with electronic signals. Instead of inserting a key, you carry around a smart key fob. When you're close enough to the vehicle, usually within a meter or so, the car's computer recognizes your fob and grants permission to start the engine. When you press the ignition button, the car performs a quick series of electronic checks. It ensures the brake pedal is pressed, verifies the gear is in park or neutral, and then sends a signal to the starter to crank the engine. There's a lot more automation going on here. The system handles the timing of when to stop cranking the starter, which helps prevent accidental overcranking, a common mistake in older cars. Because it's all electronic, there are fewer moving parts, which generally means fewer things that can physically wear out. On the surface, it's smoother, sleeker, and more convenient. You can keep your keys in your bag or pocket the whole time. But under the hood, it's a completely different architecture relying heavily on software, sensors, and electronic modules. Security is one area where these two systems really start to show their differences. Older keyed systems can be picked, bypassed, or even hot-wired. If you've seen enough movies, you know the drill. That's why manufacturers started adding immobilizer chips in the 1990s. These tiny transponders made it harder to steal a car, but the method still wasn't flawless. Push-button systems, however, rely on much more advanced encryption. The key fob and the car constantly exchange coded signals that are hard to clone or intercept. Many systems even use rolling codes that change every time the car is started, making it much harder for potential thieves to spoof the fob. That said, push-button ignitions are not invincible. In recent years, relay attacks have become a concern. 
Thieves can use signal boosting devices to trick the car into thinking the key is nearby. Even if it's sitting on a hook inside your house, manufacturers have responded with features like motion sensors in fobs or automatic signal shutdowns when the fob is idle for too long. But it's still something owners have to be aware of. In contrast, while the traditional key system might feel a bit outdated, it doesn't rely on radio signals, so there's nothing to hijack. If we're talking day-to-day -day convenience, push-button ignition is hard to beat. You walk up to your car, and it unlocks as you touch the door handle. You sit down, press the brake, hit the start button, and you're off. No fumbling for keys. No worries about accidentally locking yourself out with the engine running, since most systems won't allow that. It's especially nice if your hands are full or if you're in a hurry. Still, some drivers miss the deliberate nature of turning a key. There's a certain feedback loop there. You know exactly when the car is about to start, and there's a more direct sense of control. In push-button systems, some users report a slight disconnect, especially if they're unfamiliar with the car. Questions like, did it start? Did I press it too long? are more common than you'd expect. And while this might sound trivial, muscle memory matters. We spent decades getting used to keys. Adapting to buttons takes a bit of rewiring our instincts. From a maintenance perspective, both systems have their own challenges. Traditional ignition switches wear out, the lock cylinders can jam, and the key itself can bend or break. Replacing an ignition switch is a moderately expensive repair, but it's a known issue that's been around forever. On the flip side, push-button systems depend on electronic modules and communication networks inside the car. If something goes wrong, say the button stops responding, or the key fob signal isn't recognized, it can be much harder to diagnose. Battery life is another issue. In keyed cars, there's no battery dependency in the key itself. But with smart keys, you've got to keep an eye on battery levels, especially in cold weather. A dead fob battery can leave you stranded. So, which is better, key ignition or push-button start? Honestly, it depends on what you value more. Tradition and tactile control, or modern convenience and sleek integration. For many people, the idea of never taking their keys out of their pocket feels like magic. For others, that physical key is a comforting part of the driving ritual, simple, direct, and dependable. Both systems have strengths, both have weaknesses. One isn't objectively superior, they just reflect different priorities in design and user experience. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.